Hey everybody, welcome back to the Resident Evil 1 commentary. Now, as we said uh, in the beginning, we are playing the du well, the second <laughs> DualShock edition uh, that was uh, re-released later in the... Second uh, director's cut, the, the only DualShock yeah. edition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, you're right. Sorry HD remix. That. But to, but to <laughs> go into that, like exactly what it is, what what version we're playing, what it introduced and all that thing, I mean, the DualShock edition kind of speaks for itself. It adds rumble support, and it does have analog support, although it's still tank controls. Like, don't get that mistaken. Yeah. Um, but uh, weirdly enough, the entire soundtrack was replaced. Uh, and I don't understand that. And it's even funnier when you think about what it was replaced with. It was composed by uh, Mamoru Samurogochi, who I think also helped compose music for Animusha Warlords. That is until it was revealed later that he didn't actually write any of his music. Uh, and he had a ghostwriter uh, for his entire career. I think, uh, yeah, Takashi Nigaki was actually his ghostwriter for songs. He was, I think he like feigned like he was deaf. Like trying to be a like a, a, a next generation Beethoven, but then he finally they found out he was lying. What? And yeah. <laughs> so, so, but I I don't what I don't understand is why the soundtrack was replaced entirely in the first place. Because uh, uh, to my knowledge, the remake uses the original soundtrack. Uh, but the DualShock edition, to my knowledge, is only a part of this version of the game. And it's not bad. I I, I enjoy the the, the new yeah, soundtrack. It's, it's just if you're gonna get the if you're gonna get the director's cut to play, get the original director's cut and not the DualShock edition because the original director's cut has the original actually pretty good music from the first release, whereas this has the music from the basement kitchen. <laughs> Which I believe is an actual Mamoru Samurogoshi con <laughs> composition. Because <laughs> it yeah. sounds like someone who doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> it sounds like someone who's actually deaf composing music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Whoa. This hall is dangerous. Oh, man. Maybe it's better to secure our escape route first. So a, a cool thing about uh, Jill's design, because I, I don't remember how much this applies to Chris in the original first, game, because here's we? how we're doing it. Uh, we're playing the original okay. game on Jill's scenario, and then we're going to do remake on Chris' scenario. For Jill, most if not, uh, well, most of the action takes place on the right side of the mansion. You only go to the left side when you have to like get a uh, key item for a, another door that you have to open on the right side of the mansion. So are there for rooms that you don't have to visit at all in the in each there scenario? Are, there, there are some rooms that don't serve any purpose if you know the game beforehand. Because there's one room that I deliberately ignored earlier that tells you how herbs work. You know the healing items. The the the, the thing one of the. Th one of the interesting things about Resident Evil 1 is it's actually got more optional rooms than either of its sequels do. Um, by optional rooms, I mean rooms that don't have any um, mandatory items in them. Yeah. It's, they're, uh, just, they're just there, as far as I'm aware. Uh, Gaming Brit did a, is, well, is in the process of doing an interesting series on, on uh, dissecting the level structure and level design of the Resident Evil series. And he compared uh, the layout of Resident Evil 2 to the layout of Resident Evil 1 and the progression and how you and what you need to get where and in what order you can do things to progress the game. One of the interesting things is that Resident Evil 1 is a lot broader and less linear at the very start than Resident Evil 2 where you have to go in one direction at the beginning uh, to progress and that's it. Um, here in Resident Evil 1 uh, especially if you're playing as Chris and you have to deal with two keys at the beginning you can start going off in either direction and have stuff to do to help your progress on that side of the house. And that means there's a, there's quite a few more doors per key too in this game. I'm 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 probably butchering this because I'm 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 sort of talking about it from memory. Uh, Brit has like charts to show what items you get where We've and got what that, charts yeah. <laughs> and what you can get with those items and it's it, it, it's pretty it, it, it's 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 interesting he, he he makes it a lot more interesting than i'm making it sound i recommend watch you, you watch that video when you're done here of course <laughs> yeah we need that youtube bread money don't you know you just go to open two tabs once yeah and listen to us both at the same time and not at understand the same either time. of us mm 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 but you see, here's the thing. I was kind of under, again, as someone who does not know much of anything about Resident Evil, I was kind of under the impression that most of these games were 
relatively non-linear. I know that 4 is pretty linear, um, but that's also not trying to be a horror game after the first uh, 20 minutes. It's, it's, so. it's, 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 it's not there necessarily. If they get more linear or less, less non-linear, I should say, more than more linear. They get less non-linear in terms of what you do and where in order to progress uh, as they go. Um, but here's the other thing, though. Uh, in both 1 and 2's case, the non-linearity is, is concentrated toward the beginning of the game. Well, that's um, I would say that's how most games work, because eventually you run out of places to go, and there's only the It's, it's not left. a matter of running out of places to go. It's more like uh, the first half of the game is in the mansion, which has this east wing, west wing structure, which is which is the, the bulk of the explorative gameplay is in this mansion. And then toward the second half of the game, you're going to these much smaller areas that are one-off areas. You go there, you complete an objective, and then you go back to the mansion, or you progress to your next one-off area. Well, honestly, that's and... not even really all that different than, say, like, the original Metroid, where most of the exploring is in certain areas, but you're only in Kraid to beat Kraid, and then you leave, and you never need yeah, to go it's, back uh, there. Yeah, it's just, in this in this game's case, I would say it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a weak point, uh, because... The the most interesting stuff about Resident Evil gameplay is in the exploration and uh, decision making that comes with that. Like right now, <laughs> perfect example. Uh, he's uh, you're outside the save room. Honestly, I would have killed these zombies because they're outside the save room. But you know, you're you're just you you you've got a shotgun, but you're not using it because you want to save those bullets, right? And if you die, so... if you if you if you manage to get in and save, if you die right outside, just reload your save. Not to, well, not even that. That zombie will always reset his position every time you exit and enter that hallway. And to me, he's easy enough to avoid rather than wasting ammo. The, yeah, and, and then, you know that's that's a that's a valid tactical decision. You've got very limited ammo in this game, so you don't necessarily want to kill everything. My my modus operandi has always been to use my bullets on the um on the peop on the zombies in the areas that I have to backtrack tr through most frequently, which mostly yeah. means the save room areas. So I'll kill the zombies around the save rooms to guarantee myself safe passage to the item boxes, and I'll uh, skirt past everything else. Any zombies near save rooms or tight hallways are ones you want to get rid of because it's next to impossible to avoid them. You know, there are ways there are ways to well, specifically one with the the tight hallways there are ways to bait them to lunge at you, and while they're lunging at you, they can't do anything else. You can just run past them, but it's generally really risky. Yeah. The other thing, though, is that if you position yourself right, you can get the you can get the zombie to come at you at an angle across the hallway, and then go around it while it's at a bad angle oh, to yeah. try and grab you. That's the which I think is the it's the easiest to do in this game because yeah, the, um, the original zombies they have a really wide arc in terms of their walking patterns. Yeah. The the thing about the tank controls, a lot of people uh, shit on tank controls, and I sort of understand why. The thing is that once you've gotten a feel for them, they come pretty naturally. It's 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 magical, and once you got that feel, it's interesting how many ways you can you can manipulate enemy movement with your own movement to get around them. No, my biggest hurdle was remembering that square was sprint <laughs> in this game. Before uniform controls for 3D games. You know, in Resident Evil 4 and beyond, it's always the equivalent of the PlayStation's X button. That's sprint. I, I, I like that one zombie by the save room who's just standing in the back yeah. there. And, it's like, and I'll never touch him. <laughs> He's like, hi, bye. I'll leave Frank alone. You you leave the you you leave that camera angle so quickly every time he doesn't even have a chance to start moving so it's just like he's chilling there watching you, like the grandma <laughs> from Resident Evil Seven. So wait, if a zombie is not on screen, it can't move. Oh no, it it will. Oh 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 oh, it moves. Um, this entire section, camera angles and all, is according to the game's programming one three dimensional section. The camera angles are uh, switch as you go through, and the the uh, pre rendered background is sort of a visual overlay for the three-dimensional environment you're going through. That's basically how it works. Um, Most enemies react on proximity. Yeah, And there's the broken shotgun, which you don't need anymore. No. <laughs> Just put that right away. They brought the classic broken shotgun puzzle back in Resident Evil 7, but it's a lot more interesting there because you can completely ignore the broken shotgun if you like. Um, there's a, there's a, a broken shotgun and a toy shotgun. 
and you need the you need the broken shotgun to get the shotgun the, to get the first shotgun off the uh, off the trap pedestal. It just shuts a door on you if you don't use it, so it's not a ceiling trap or anything. But you can ignore the broken shotgun completely. You know, you can ignore the regular shotgun completely and actually repair the broken shotgun, and it's a better shotgun. <laughs> what the good things want, come. Good things come to those who wait. What, what the designers want you to do is um, get the is get the broke get the original shotgun with the broken shotgun, and then find a toy shotgun later on and exchange it for the broken shotgun, and then and then repair it late game for a better shotgun. But there's nothing stopping you from just waiting until you're out of the house and taking the broken shotgun with you and getting the, uh, the the first hidden repair kit right as soon as you leave the house and repairing the shotgun with that. I mean, what else are you going to use it for? A better pistol? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, you re- you notice that I'm deliberately now ignoring clips because I'm really close to the point of just putting the gun into the box and never taking it out ever again. Yeah, yeah the, the, the handgun. Because if you know if you know where to look, you get plenty of shotgun. Yeah, ammo. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't ignore the handgun ammo as Chris because Chris doesn't have as much firepower in the late game, so you're gonna need as much ammo as you can, as you can, especially if you don't necessarily know the background, the, the 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 if you don't necessarily know the game inside and out. But um, uh, Jill gets the uh the grenade launcher, so no, no, yeah, no, bazooka, bazooka. Yeah, it's called the bazooka in the original. I keep forgetting. Uh, I mostly play the um, the remake, so it's called the grenade launcher there. And I'm glad that that keep that the 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 old uh, Resident Evil tradition of the grenade launcher being the female character's uh, unique weapon is being maintained for the Resident Evil remake, just as to the Resident Resident Evil 2 remake, just as it was in the original R2, because that was also Claire's weapon there. Uh, the the idea of it with uh, Jill is that it's a weapon that has like three interchangeable ammo types, so they gave it to the character with a larger inventory, uh, which makes oh, sense. I, you know, I never yeah, I never looked at it that way. Okay, yeah, so they, here's the thing though: my immersion is ruined because I don't think it makes sense for the female character to have more pockets. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, you don't get it. Okay, she, they carry she, pocketbooks. She 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 brought a purse. Yeah. Oh, oh, good point. She's smart enough, and you know, and, and Chris, Chris, look, Chris got over his fanny pack phase, <laughs> so he left it. At hey, home. they're stylish and practical, all right. <laughs> the rock Your wears them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if either of these guys, either, either yeah, of these I heard that confident, job. they'd have um, they'd have a belt pack anyway. But you're talking about you're crazy. <laughs> the um. Uh, the, the 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 difference between Jill and Chris in Resident Evil One, and this is true in the remake as well, is that is that Jill has a larger inventory, but she also has less health. So yeah. she can also yeah. lockpick. She's weaker, and yet she can carry more. Hmm. And at the end of the day, I'd rather carry more than take more. <laughs> no, because... I was kind of pointing out that you know, if you say it the way I just said it, it sounds like an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> does so does Chris have any other special ability to ma- to match the lock picking thing Joe He can has do? a lighter which means he can light things that need to be set on fire without wasting inventory space on the lighter. Yeah. But that's Jill not, has to carry it in her pocket. That's not really useful in this case. So <laughs> wait, hold on. So a lighter takes up as much space in your pocket as a shotgun yes. does. Well, still, yes. still, still not as bad as um, Resident Evil Five, where your armor is a pocket in your it's armor. Pocket in your armor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but can I? I want to. I want to know though. Why? Why is it a wasted inventory spot for Jill when Chris can carry it all willy nilly? Maybe, maybe Chris has a lighter in his like in his in his toes. He had it surgically well, put yeah, there. Yeah, he's he's Inspector Gadget. His fingertip <laughs> comes off. The, the main thing is just that the lighter is an item that you have to find and pick up, and that means it's an inventory slot. The um, uh, the tiger puzzle that we just saw is actually one of the more amusing cases of the uh, of the remake messing with people who played the original. Because there are two, there are two colored gems, and they lead to two separate items in this game. Um, there are three colored gems in the remake, and uh, one of the when, when you get to the room that has two different colored gems, the one that wasn't in the original is the correct one. And if you try to use the one that was in the original, the the, the room with the tiger statue becomes a pit of snakes. They just drop snakes from the ceiling, <laughs> and you have to leave the room to get them to despawn. Zombie uh, snakes or normal snakes? <laughs> 
Normal Snakes. snakes. Oh, lame. Yeah. Worst game ever. Yeah, yeah. It's going to say, fuck you for playing our original game. <laughs> I think the virus made them more aggressive, but that's about it as far as the snakes go, which is good because the, 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 the oh, well, there is a giant snake now that I think about it. Yeah, there's Yawn. <laughs> yawn. Uh, <laughs> so, but, you know, just regular snakes. Uh, the, the same snake enemy from the, from the pool area. <laughs> I start shooting at this guy and I realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> so there's no point in wasting the ammo. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do here before this part wraps up is that uh, this is technically my second playthrough. I did a test playthrough beforehand and I wanted to do that specifically for the special key, which you only get after beating the game. Uh, and in a DualShock edition, or director's cut entirely, uh, they give you alternate costumes. My favorite thing about the costume room in the remake is that it actually has a backstory. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a hidden room that uh, George Trevor designed into the mansion, um, and it's hidden behind like a painting in the, 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 the room off the side of the main hall with the map in it. Um, you can find a file that hints at its location in your first playthrough, but no, you can't get in there until your second playthrough. But it's 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 hidden in a much more interesting location. You can see it on the mansion map, though. Tactical Looking gear. Looking good, Jill. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is not uh, <laughs> this is not <laughs> raccoon. Uh, no, sorry. This is stars. This is not stars. Uh, <laughs> uh, regulation. This is, All right. This is not stars regulation. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I. Okay. In Resident Evil Three, Jill can wear wear what she wants because the zombie apocalypse sort of caught her on a regular day. I don't necessarily mind her her, her uh, rocking a tube top in that game. It makes narrative sense. What 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 always weirded me out is that like in Resident Evil Two, Leon has basically fantasy police armor, and uh, <laughs> Claire has no leathers to cover her her limbs, even though she rides into the game on a motorcycle off the highway. And the novel actually had to acknowledge that it was so stupid. Um, I don't uh, I don't actually understand why they went that direction because Elza Walker has full tracksuit gear going on in her design in the beta. So it's not like they didn't know that motorcyclists should probably wear protection while driving. But, um, yeah. It's, uh, it's weird. In any case, this is just an outfit that she found in a closet somewhere, so whatever. Yeah, why you would size. bother getting changed in this Out of your protective army know. gear and into regular-ass clothes, I should mention. Yeah. It's going to be a long night. Well, you, you, you say army gear as a joke, but she actually was in the military. I know, so that I'm not joking, so I'm like, why? <laughs> Jill, why? 